Okay, let's start reviewing what are the futures. And before that, I will need to explain forward contracts first. So forward contracts. Let's say on the left-hand side, we have an oil producing company. On the, on the right-hand side, we have a refinery, which consumes all oil and produces some a refined products, right? So on the left-hand side, we have producer that sells the oil. On, on the right-hand side, we have consumers that buys the oil. So let's say right now the uh, uh, refiner needs some crude oil. Uh, the producer has some oil. They just uh, sell and buy, and that's it. Okay. But this is an ongoing business activity, right? The, the producer knows that for uh, any time future, they know the production rate and they know how much crude oil they will have in the future. Also refinery, this is a continuous production process. They know they're gonna need a crude oil for almost any time in the future, right? And uh, they, uh, uh, they, both of these are concerned uh, about mar market fluctuations and also they wanna make sure they have some crude oil uh, market for crude uh, for the produced crude oil, or they they can have the crude oil that they need, and also they're concerned about the price. The uh, producer is concerned that okay, what if price drops? We're going to lose money. On the other side, the refinery uh, is concerned that if price goes up, we're going to lose money, and we want to hedge our risk against price fluctuations. So what they can what they can do is they they can uh, 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 negotiate a contract which is called forward and they can discuss three things time price and quantity and let's say we are going to sign a contract that sometime in the future let's say in November at the locked price of fifty dollars the producer is going to deliver some specific quantity of crude oil, let's say $5,000 to the refinery, right? So they have a contract that locks the price for delivery uh, uh, in some time in the future, and they can have many of these. So this is called forward contract. And by doing that, they uh, first make sure uh, uh, the producer has a market for crude oil, uh, the, the consumer, they know for sure they will have crude oil in November. And also they know the price is locked. The price, they lock the price $50, right? The price doesn't change. Okay, what, what are the uh, kind of the restriction limitations of these forward contracts? Okay, first, let's say these two uh, uh, entities, the producers and con consumers, they are not exactly the same size. Let's say the refinery is a very large refinery or the producer is a very large producer and, and one of them is a lot smaller or larger than the other one. So then they have to go and probably find 10 other uh, uh, a counterparty to find, negotiate, sign the contract for each of them. Uh, and, and they have to do it for almost every month, so on and so forth. So, and a very, it's doable. It is still uh, uh, an ongoing activity in the financial market, but it's not the most efficient way of doing it. The other problem with this is, let's say this contract is signed to, to, to deliver the crude oil in November and the, 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 the price is locked at $50. Let's say, uh, a couple of months uh, to the November, let's say price of crude oil goes up. Let's say it goes to $60. So if it goes in the market, it's $60, but under this contract, it is locked at $50. So because it is locked, then the producer loses money because if there was no contract, producer could have sold it in the market at, at $60. So the producer will get more and more upset that, okay, I am losing money under this contract, but there is no way that they can cancel the contract. On the other side, if price of crude oil starts going down, uh, the, the producer is happy, but the uh, consumer uh, cannot uh, cancel the contract and buy and, and, and go and buy the cheaper oil in the market. They have to paid a $50 locked price. 
So the problem is they cannot cancel the contract at all. So this is the, the kind of the introduction how there is a better, more efficient type of contract needed based on the forward to, uh, uh, and that, that is gonna be called futures, which I'm gonna explain in, in, in a bit. Okay, now let's make some changes and, and move toward that efficient, more efficient contract, which we'll call it later on futures, right? Okay, the first thing that we wanna do is we wanna introduce the third party here. And let's say, uh, we call this uh, the third party and say, instead of producer going and find and going and trying to find consumers, this producer, oil producer will just go and uh, uh, sign a contract with this third party, call it exchange or call it a businessman, businesswoman and a, a, a company. And the consumer, the refinery will also go and sign the contract with this third party. So it solves the problem that they don't need to go and find, let's say 10 more consumers and sign individual contracts for them. And let's make some little more adjustments, right? Let, let's say uh, we make these contracts stand up. You remember in the previous slide, I said, okay, these contracts, these forward contracts are case-based. They are signed for the specific case and uh, between these companies and the, their uh, uh, contract terms are negotiated between these two entities. Now let's introduce a type of contract that is all the terms are standard. There's nothing negotiable on it. These are all fixed in place. Nobody can change it. The quantity is, is fixed. The delivery point is fixed. The price is fixed, which I'm gonna talk about the price in a bit. And everything is fixed under these contracts except the delivery date. And delivery date goes by the incremental month. It's either January or February or, or March or so on. The only difference between these contracts is the uh, delivery date or expiration date. So when we make these contracts exactly similar, there's no need for any negotiation back and forth. So we will have these standard contracts and what we can do is we can have all the other entities to join these and uh, to join this market and trade these contracts. So what will end up will, will be an exchange in the middle, which will have these contracts. They're standard, all exactly the same. And we have these players that the, the actual producer, the refinery and the, the oil producing can also join as one of these uh, players in the market. So they can either buy these contracts or they can sell them. If they buy this contract, we call them, they, their position is long. If they sell this contract, their position is short. If they buy the contract, long position, they have to take the delivered crude oil. They will receive the crude oil when contract expires. On the other side, those players, those entities who sold the contract, their position is short. They have to deliver the crude oil, the amount of crude oil uh, at the expiration date, right? Because these all these contracts are exactly the same. Uh, these are called futures. They have uh, uh, the, the fixed uh, quantity, 1,000 uh, uh, barrels of crude oil. Uh, the delivery point is fixed, Cushing, Oklahoma, and the spec is uh, WTI West Texas uh, uh, Intermediate, and that's a low, sulf low sulfur uh, sweet crude oil. And uh, the expiration day goes by the month, uh, January, February, March, and so on. Uh, and the price is set by these trades, by these market movements, sell and buy a supply and demand. If somebody does not like the loss that they are making based on the price movement, they can get out of the contract anytime they want. They don't have to wait until the expiration date, right? If the prices are going up and the position is short, they can just immediately close the position by buying back, by closing the position uh, 
uh, uh, with the exchange. The entities who are long these contracts, the en entities who bought the contracts, will make money, will profit when price go uh, prices uh, go up. On the other side, if if an entity has a short position, will lose money. If price starts to go down, uh, uh, long position will lose money and short position will make money. Okay, important points here. These contracts are binding. The, the entity, the party that is short, the party that sold this contract, the party has to deliver crude oil at the expiration date. If that party is not an oil producing company, or if that party is not uh, interested in delivering or cannot deliver the crude oil, they have to close their position. They have to cancel the contract. How? If they are short, they have to buy back. If they are long, they have to sell. 